guys, today I want to talk to you about this process we've all been going through and a little bit about how we are managing it as people. Of course, I'm talking about this pandemic, what it is putting us through and how we're responding to it. So lots of people are feeling lots of different things right now. Lots of people are being controlled by their feelings and their responses show it. For example, people are fighting over masks and social distancing at grocery stores. Now, I'm not going to tell you that feelings are bad or wrong, because they're not. Feelings are, well, feelings. However, they are indicators of our current states or conditions. In other words, your feelings represent your state of being. They are indicators of your emotional and mental states. And so, if your current condition is one that can be described, say, as love or joy and peace, you will have the feelings associated with that state. And if your current condition can be described as maybe sad, anger, jealousy, fear, weary, you will have the corresponding feelings that come with these as well. See, feelings and conditions cannot be separated. They are a part of our makeup. They are a part of our relationships with people, with places and ideas. We, we can't escape them. They're so intertwined in our realities that we, we often respond out of our feelings. And so, so many things influence our feelings. For instance, if you smile at someone when you're not feeling happy, it can actually make you feel happy. Think about what happens when you watch a movie, listen to music, or even just listen to someone's story. We can experience tons of different feelings during those moments based on whatever music's playing, what's happening on the screen, or the pictures we see in our minds as we listen. Even our physical conditions affect how we feel as well. Even just asking someone how they feel affects how they feel. Back to 2013 study on the effects of measuring emotions stated that how people feel could depend on whether someone is asking. Reporting how we are feeling requires an awareness and a conscious assessment of our emotional states. And these processes may alter emotional experiences. And so the study concluded that the act of reporting on one's emotional states can alter emotional response. Even the simplest verbal measure, measures invoke self-awareness of uh, psychological processes causing changes in emotion. And this seems to happen because thoughts that are characteristic of, say, emotional response are likely to be replaced by awareness and introspection. And as these thoughts change, so too does physiology, fundamentally altering the emotional response. And with it, the corresponding feelings. So you see, what we think impacts what we feel. And our thoughts trigger feelings. Uh, think about it. When you are worried about something, thinking about it can produce the feelings associated with, well, fear maybe. And if you're thinking about it, uh, something that excites you, well, it can produce feelings associated with happiness. Feelings can be very powerful. Uh, if you are feeling good, you will probably find it easier to do something you don't want to do. And if you're feeling miserable, you probably would not want to do something you might typically enjoy. Or if you do it, it's just not as fulfilling. See, see how powerful feelings can be? Let me give you another example. Let's say you have been looking forward to the possibility of going to this restaurant with a friend, but they have to turn you down. And this event can trigger thoughts within you that say, well, they just don't like me. And then as a result, you experience these feelings of rejection and it, it puts you in a bad mood or a sad mood. But here's how tricky feelings can be. <laughs> you can actually change the way you feel by examining what you believe and by questioning it. So in this example, you examine the belief that they don't like me. You can look at the evidence for this belief by asking, why do I think they don't like me? Could there be something else going on that I'm not aware of? Am I just overreacting? See, by examining that belief, I might be able to come to realize that ah, I jumped to an unwarranted conclusion. And then as a result, my feelings in that moment, they change and they get better. You see how powerful, tricky, and complex feelings can be? And they can get confusing as well. We can experience feelings that you would think are contradictory to one another. You can, you can feel happy and scared at the same time. Say when you're buying a home, starting a new job, or moving to another state. You can experience feelings of excitement, but you can also experience the feelings associated with fear all at the same time. We can even have feelings that hide behind our feelings, right? For instance, you could be angry, 
but you might be expressing feelings of anger because behind that anger, you're afraid that you've been hurt. My point is, feelings can be tricky and confusing, which is why we can't solely rely upon them, but we can't also dismiss them. We just, we just don't want to be mastered by them. Let me give you another example. I would suppose that when we generally think about love, we are probably thinking more about the feelings that are associated with love. So then whether or not we are in love might actually be based on whether or not we have those feelings of love because we want that feeling that comes with love. It's like we're more in love with the feelings of love and we look for those things that give us those feelings. And once those feelings are gone, well, we move on. See, this is what it looks like to be controlled by our feelings. Now, you might be asking, why talk about all of this? Well, as disciples of Jesus, our goal is to become more and more like Him. And while in order to become more like Jesus, we must know a bit about Him, it also means we need to understand some things about ourselves. And part of doing this is realizing that our feelings are indicators of our current condition. And so instead of being mastered by our feelings or just simply trying to manage our feelings, we need to look at, we need to look at what they're pointing to. And this is especially true when we're talking about negative feelings or feelings associated with unhealthy states of being. We need to give attention to the underlying condition being expressed through these feelings. It's about working to get to the bottom of what's going on. And when we do this, we're getting to the heart of what's happening. And this is what disciples of Jesus do because it's what he did. Consider this in Luke 12, Jesus is teaching thousands of people and they're gathering around. But while he's teaching, he's interrupted. A little over two months ago, we were living our lives. Churches were gathering, we were working, planning vacations, buying homes, raising our families, going to sporting events and movies and restaurants. We, we were freely gathering together with friends and family with little to no concern. Then all of a sudden, a pandemic hit. Fear of the unknown set in, and everything was interrupted. But Luke goes on to tell us in Luke 12, 13, that someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. See, this man wants Jesus to make a decision, and he wants Jesus to make a decision that will be in his favor. He is essentially asking Jesus to take sides and decide with him. Now, if you can imagine the feelings that motivated a request like that, Maybe feelings of missing out, of being cheated, maybe feelings of neglect. Regardless, his feelings were expressing an underlying condition. And what we're going to learn is that this man's underlying condition was covetousness. And with covetousness comes a bit of selfishness. Since this pandemic hit, we as people have responded in lots of different ways. Some ways we might be proud of, some ways we might not be so proud of. And as things begin to reopen, we're seeing many people who are being controlled by their feelings. Sometimes there are violent reactions, physical and verbal altercations, blatant disregard, disregard for where other people might be or with what's going on with them. Feelings seem to be the preferred fuel of the day, and it doesn't always turn out so well. Luke goes on to say in verse 14, But he said to him, Man, <laughs> Who made me a judge or arbitrator over you? And while it was common practice to go to a rabbi, seeking help to resolve common disputes among people, there were actually officials who were appointed to handle things like this. And this man was, was not coming to Jesus for wisdom. Well, was probably more motivated by greed and was trying to use Jesus for, for his own ends. However, Jesus doesn't take up the dispute this man raises. Instead, Jesus addresses the underlying condition, what this man's real issue was. Goes on in verse 15. And Jesus said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And there you have the underlying condition. And to further illustrate, Jesus uses a parable. And he told them a parable saying, the land of a rich man produced plentifully, and he thought, now remember thoughts produce feelings, and he thought to himself, what shall I do, for I have nowhere to store my crops? And he said, I will do this, 
I will tear down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. Notice his solution. It's directly connected to the ideas that govern his life, and these ideas are shrouded in covetousness. Verse 19 says, And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. These are words that express the feelings of satisfaction, fulfillment, accomplishment. Now, remember, feelings within themselves are not bad. But when you understand the underlying condition that promoted those feelings, it could be another story. Verse 20, But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. See, the underlying condition here is one of covetousness, and Jesus is helping them and us see that covetousness is at the center of the issue, and we have to get to the heart, to the center of what's going on with us. This is what led this man to ask Jesus to side with him against his brother. And as I said, just as Jesus navigated to the heart of the issue, so must we. Everyone is where they are right now for a reason. People have been locked up in their homes. People have lost income. People have been watching the media and all the reports and information about the pandemic. Lots of things have happened over the past two months. And people are beginning to emerge from having spent all this time marinating in all these things. And, and, and the people who are emerging are different from who they were before all this hit. Some might be more drastically different than others. But regardless, all this has affected everyone in some way. Well, some deeper than others. We all may have different feelings we are experiencing when we watch the news or listen to the updates on the pandemic or when we see how things are reopening or when we see people standing too close to one another or not wearing masks or when we see people staying home. As we venture out and figure out how to navigate all this, we will be among people who might think differently about things and how things should be. And many, if not most, might be more focused on themselves than others. And understandably so. But you might end up around other people who freely express how they feel about what you're doing and how they don't like it. If this happens, remember you are most likely on the receiving end of what someone is feeling in the moment. And hidden behind that feeling is an underlying condition. It may be fear or anxiety. Or it may just simply be selfishness or irritation or, or something else. Regardless, in that moment, they may trigger all sorts of negative feelings within you. Be careful to not allow yourself to be controlled by those feelings. And remember that no matter how you feel, responding with love is the best response. Or maybe you might find yourself among people and they're not following the safety protocols that you think they should. Maybe they're not wearing a mask or they're standing too close to you. And this may trigger the feelings associated with fear within you. And that's okay. However, be careful to not allow yourself to be controlled by those feelings and react in the way that is not loving. I can guarantee you, it'll just make you feel worse. In either scenario, being mastered by our feelings can be disastrous. Furthermore, if you find yourself in a situation where you had a negative outburst, where you reacted in a way that was unhealthy, where you are being controlled by your feelings and it's not good, it would be helpful for you to try and figure out where those feelings are coming from. Ask yourself, why did I feel this way? Why did I react in that way? What was triggered and what triggered it? Doing this can be helpful because when we get to the bottom of the issue, then we'll be able to see what we actually might need to work on. And we might find that what we need to work on has more to do with our faith and hope than anything else. But that will be part two of the COVID trials. For now, grace and peace, and maybe I'll see you soon.